the business climate in Jersey City has only been steady as a variety of businesses continue to make their way to Jersey City and to call it their home. So stay tuned for Jersey City Business Watch. Here with a new business that's just opening up on Jersey Avenue um, called Juice Well with uh, Miss Egan who uh, is visiting from Santa Barbara and Miss Williams who's a resident here yes. and uh, there's another one you said in the in Santa Barbara yeah in Carpinteria. we have one in Carpinteria and we're about to open up another little store in Santa Barbara so we're taking Jersey City out to the West Coast and uh, as we always touch on uh, small businesses are really the backbone to any economy obviously really significant um, in an urban area like this in Jersey City and we're really thankful that people are making the investment in our community to uh, move it forward the community has been incredibly supportive and welcoming us with open arms we have a local processing model for our company and our mission is to source locally to hire locally and to uh, su supply the local community so that it's a circular mm. movement. And you get the nutrition of 12 to 15 servings of fruits and vegetables in, in one of these bottles of juice and it just helps supplement your body yeah. and um, in, a, in, a, uh, in the most natural way that you can. Is this a, uh, like a meal replacement or is it a kind of like complementary to your normal diet? It's both, actually. We have um, one, three, and five day cleanses where you can use it as meal replacement. I drink at least one a day, sometimes two and three, just because I know that I, it's a good way to get my fruits and veggies in my body. So you can use it as a meal replacement or you can, you can just use it as a supplement. So it's both. So fresh cold pressed juice is made by uh, using a commercial grade pressed machine uh, similar to a Norwalk press which was created for home use which outputs quarts. Uh, this is made to output gallons. It triturates the produce via a chute so each ingredient is mixed, is juiced separately. So you take cucumbers and you triturate it, it grinds them up into a coarse pulp and then it's caught into a, a, a sanitized bag and it's pr hydraulically pressed with roughly about five tons of pressure. And then each ingredient is chilled and stored. And at the end of the process, once everything is juiced, it's mixed uh, per our recipe. We include herbs and spices into a lot of the juices, uh, making them food therapy. We use whole, whole food as our therapy. Juice Well is located in the historic downtown at 528 Jersey Avenue between Christopher Columbus and Newark. We're open Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Our website is www.wejuicewell.com because we do juice well. And our phone number is 201-332-1600. Today we share and celebrate this significant achievement only because of everyone that's been associated with Caduceus. Client, employee, business partner, shareholder, friend, and family member. Uh, akin to the farmer whose success depends on many variables, had we not had the confidence of our clients, the dedication of our employees, the excellence of our business partners, the faith of our shareholders and the support of our families and friends, such as you here present, we would not be marking the seventh year, 17 year journey. On this joyous occasion, not wishing to miss anyone, I won't try to mention any single name, not even Jim's. <laughs> so each one who's been essential to our growth 
and I want to thank you all. And as a farmer sowing his fields, I cast my thanks to each and every one of you, and I ask that the good Lord bless us all. Thank you. you know, Jim called um, probably better part of a month ago and said that uh, as a resident, he was investing in Jersey City, and it really is a story of uh, what we're striving to be in Jersey City overall. He's a, a homeowner here and somebody who grew a business to 65 people across the river. And during the course of this campaign, we talked a lot about what we want to attract here in Jersey City. And kind of the sweet spot really is the business that's between 50 and 200 people. Because, you know, for a long time, Jersey City's tried to compete with the employers who have 1,000, 2,000 employees. And what we realized um, during the course of this campaign, we talked about it a lot, that really where we want to be competing is exactly, you know, where Jim is, is the employer who had a vision, started a business, it grew to a place that he outgrew the Manhattan market, he was looking for somewhere else to be, and Jersey City is perfectly situated um, to capitalize on that. And, you know, this was a, a good story because it's one that Jersey City really wasn't involved in up until the very end, and it's really Jim's foresight recognizing the progress in Jersey City and the opportunities in the state of New Jersey. And uh, I think you did mention that the governor's office and the lieutenant governor was very involved as well in helping you navigate these waters to get proper incentives and, and leverage all that uh, New Jersey and Jersey City have to offer for this type of business. So, um, you know, these are the types of things as mayor that are really uh, a privilege to be a part of. And I've been in this job for um, a little bit less than two months and every day is a different challenge from, um, you know, police stuff to this morning we had a three alarm fire. But these are the things that are really, really special because you really see somebody growing a family and a business here in Jersey City that we recognize from our standpoint is going to be a partnership hopefully not just for a year or 10 years but 20 years when you outgrow this space to have your thousandth employee here and uh, you know th th those days are not so far away to be honest with you so um, it is my privilege on behalf of uh, the quarter million people that call Jersey City home and the half a million people that are here on any given day working like the rest of you here um, to offer a proclamation and a resolution that the City Council supported on to memorialize the uh, the fact that you're moving here, that you're moving your business here, that you're a stakeholder here, and uh, that you're invested in Jersey City. And we're really, really proud to have all of you as part of this. So congratulations, and we look forward to working with you. Hi, I'm Jim Bonomo. I'm uh, Executive Vice President of Caduceus, Inc. We're a healthcare management a services company here in Jersey City, New Jersey. So we started Caduceus back in 1996. Um, we've been around for, s I guess, our 17th year. We started with uh, two employees on 29th Street in New York, and uh, we've grown it to uh, this terrific facility here in Jersey City. We currently have about 65 employees and growing rapidly. And what Caduceus does is we really do all the back office operations for large medical practices. Mostly our clients are large hospital-based institutions that are owning or operating small independent physicians. And we put our uh, systems in to run the clinical aspect, all the things that pretty much give hot doctors a headache. Uh, so their billing, their coding, their clinicals, EMR, uh, we deal with all the patient issues as far as collecting um, personal balances. Um, those little statements you get in the mail are probably from our company, and those are probably our people that you're talking to um, when you're giving us information to pay your bill. So we're located here at um, 30 Montgomery uh, Street in Jersey City, New Jersey, down here on the waterfront, which is just fantastic for all of our employees. Um, take a walk out on the water, it's just a terrific place to be these days.
know, we have a number of uh, specialties that are going to be coming here, including obstetrics, cardiology, midwifery. Uh, we're going to have uh, urology, general surgery, and uh, in the evenings, we're going to have a, an after-hours walk-in care center where you can schedule your appointments online and come in to be seen. So we're really excited about all of that. You know, over the last five years, we've worked really, really hard to turn the medical center around, and we've done a great job. We've recruited over 350 doctors, a whole host of new services. Now we're ready to start reaching out into the community, and that's what this health stop's all about. But with this is, we're not going to stop here. We've got about five more planned. We have one on Summit Avenue, one at Grove Street, new one that we're under construction right now at the Greenville Hospital. Our objective is to reach out to the community and make sure that we're providing the best health care services we can possibly provide. And so we're really excited about this. Lots of uh, opportunity. We're looking at innovative ways that we can serve the folks in Jersey City. Uh, you can go online and make an appointment now for any of your health care needs. Just go to inquicker.com and um, you can make an appointment online. It makes it uh, real easy. And the next thing we're doing is bringing telemedicine. So you can do a doctor's appointment on Skype. So look for that. We're looking forward to uh, a lot of different ways that we can serve the community. And uh, we're really excited about this new health stop. Uh, it's, uh, it's important because we talk a lot about you know public safety infrastructure and education infrastructure. and. Uh, health institutions like this are as important as any to a growing and vibrant city. And uh, I just want to say that Joe Scott and some of the employees here um, have done a terrific job. Over the last five years, I remember uh, when the conversation started with Joe and his team came in, um, the hospital was very much in the red and uh, I believe $60 million in uh, mm -hmm. losing money per year. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it really has turned around where, where it uh, is in the forefront today as it relates to conversations on health in the city and uh, actually in the region here in northern New Jersey. And I really think that's a testament to all the people here. So this is just kind of a, another small step in the, uh, in the classic evolution and progress of the Jersey City Medical Center, one of the oldest institutions in Jersey City with a real terrific, terrific history. So it is our privilege collectively um, to be a part of it today. Congratulations to all of you on the great work. On Newark Avenue here in India Square. Um, we're opening, cutting the ribbon on a new business over here called Bombay Talkies. And uh, as you look at the last census, the Indo-American community, particularly in Jersey City, was one of the fastest growing communities in this entire city. If you looked up and down Newark Avenue here, um, it is all small business owners uh, from the Indo-American community. And it's our plan, we're working with Raju here and Dave and the commerce uh, and the business merchants in order to put this more as a tourist destination. So outside of the regular um, sidewalks and street paving, we're gonna do ornamental lighting, we're gonna do an archway to enter it so that way when people come down Newark Avenue here, they could really get to see something really special and it becomes a tourist destination. So I'm going to turn it over to the business owner here who's investing in the community here and he could talk a little bit about the food that's offered over here at Bombay Talkies. Thank you Mr. Philip and thank you for coming and inaugurating over here. The food like you know it's just on the public demand like you know there was no Bombay type food over here so like it's especially like you know we had a chef that's uh, going to prepare a food what people are looking for and it's very authentic and nice. Bergen Court Apartments is a collaboration between many partners, including the City of Jersey City, the New Jersey Housing and Mortgage Finance Agency, New Jersey Community Capital, the Hudson County Division of Housing and Community Development, the United Way of Hudson County, and New Bridges. We thank you all for your contribution to make this project a reality. This particular site is very important because it sits across the street from Snyder High School. It is also located within the boundaries of the Greenville Community Plan, which has pending approval from the New Jersey Department of Community Affairs Neighborhood Revitaliz Revitalization Tax Credit Program. The Greenville Plan calls as one of its primary objectives to rid the community of abandoned properties and to create more affordable housing in this high-cost market. 
The project involves the creation of eight family units that will be rented at about $800 a month in a market where a comparable unit rents for about $1,300, providing lower income families an opportunity to realize some savings in their family budget. It also creates four supportive housing units for special needs populations of extremely low income. Our philosophy is that if we provide quality housing in a price sensitive manner, families succeed and so do the communities. So thank you again for your commitment to building stronger communities. Really an honor and exciting moment to be here this morning while we cut a ribbon to go into affordable housing in Ward F. As a social service worker for the last 13 years, I know that affordable housing is one of the largest issues our people face right now today. If you really think about it for a moment, you will realize that if you work at Dunkin' Donut that just opened up on MLK Drive or Kentucky Fried Chicken down on Communipoy Avenue or McDonald's on Martin Luther King Drive, you can work more than 40 hours a week and still have a difficult time as a single mom paying a rent of 950 to 1500 a month. So with units like this, beautiful, new, and affordable, I can be nothing but excited. And I want to say, John, you've done a great job. And Garden State, you guys are just wonderful for the hard work that you've put into this community. And if no one else appreciates it, I love you guys for it. And if you need me ever, ever, which John, I shouldn't say that too loud because John knows how to email and call already. <laughs> but if you need me for anything, you know that I'm always available. And I wanna just say good luck and keep up this hard work and bring more of this kind of housing to Ward F. I love you guys and God bless. And um, Diane said if nobody else appreciates you, and I can tell you, Garden State Episcopal, Carol, John, Chantel, that, uh, uh, that a lot of people appreciate you in this city and appreciate the great work that Garden State Episcopal is doing for the city of Jersey City. Um, you know, Cal Tome and Coleman already kind of covered it, I think, which is that uh, we have a, a, a huge dearth of affordable housing, low-income housing here in Jersey City, and the need is so great um, and when wages are stagnant in this kind of economy and a lack of jobs, uh, we, we can't do enough on the affordable housing front. Um, so I want to acknowledge Garden State Episcopal. And on behalf of uh, Mayor Fulop, uh, we wanted to present this uh, proclamation that, uh, to Garden State Episcopal for their great work and the ribbon cutting today. Thank you. You're welcome. And um, <laughs> thank you very much. And you know, there, there, there are so many parties and entities that come together to make something like this happen. And um, from the New Jersey Housing and Mortgage, fi uh, Mortgage Finance Agency to HEDC in the city, um, Hudson County, uh, Economic uh, Housing and Community Development Offices, um, and uh, Newbridge Services, uh, all the people who come together to make a project like this happen uh, so that we can have Again, 12 units of affordable housing, uh, eight uh, low income and four special needs. Uh, this is so important, so critical, and we thank all of the partners who come together to do this. And I would be remiss if, uh, while we're, we're the new administration coming in and kind of taking credit, there was an old administration where this all started with, and it's, it should be acknowledged that uh, Mayor Healy and uh, the former council members as well were a big part of uh, making that all happen, making this happen, and a huge part of that, I should say. And um, you know, we, we aim as this administration, as Councilman Coleman and Mayor Fulop, to ensure that we increase and continue to um, build the affordable housing and low income housing throughout Jersey City um, because we know there's a, a desperate need for that here in Jersey City. Um, on behalf of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development and Diane Johnson, our field office director, and Secretary Sean Donovan, and actually the President of the United States, <laughs> um, I want to congratulate Garden State Episcopal on the completion of this project. Um, 
Hot actually has two roles here, and I'm, I'm waiting to see when Tony gets up how much money he's got in here. And I'm glad we're first, because <laughs> we always have that competition. But actually, there's um, two sites of funding, and it's actually an important combination because it's one of the goals of HUD to end homelessness. In fact, we're hoping to end homelessness for veterans by 2015, which is right around the corner. But there's four units of special needs housing, um, and that is supported by um, the supportive housing program which is now our continuum of care program and so working with the county's continuum of care um, it's really important that those units are targeted and the important part is that those funds can be used for both housing and social service but because HUD is a housing agency we're really hoping that more agencies use those funds for housing and bring in other supportive services so it's an it's an important component. They also matched it with the city's home funds, um, which are HUD funds, but it's also important that we're using those funds to meet our, our special needs. So this project is really a good example of mixing the home funds and the supportive housing funds to meet that very low income and, and, and help to end homelessness. So um, HUD has had a very good experience with the city of Jersey City. Um, they use their home funds well um, with this county's continuum of care. Um, and we're always proud when we can use it with Garden State Episcopal. Um, I was looking today, we have allocated over $6.1 million of supportive housing funds to um, Garden State Episcopal, um, even though they're still listed as Jersey City Episcopal <laughs> in our system. But we've allocated that, and over $5.5 million has been expended, which is a, a very critical point because as funds are always um, limited, Congress is constantly looking at those funds that aren't expended and so we always want to be able to point to people who use the funds and use the funds well so it's a very good day we're happy to be here and to um, celebrate with all of our partners thank you uh, councilwoman and council president uh, well I have to tell you Amory I think you win on this one uh, the agency did participate we provided about six hundred thousand uh, dollars into the fund but in this case, HUD beat us out. But the New Jersey Housing and Mortgage Finance Agency has a long history with several administrations, going back 40 years, I would imagine, uh, in providing affordable housing, assisting in providing affordable housing throughout the state of New Jersey, and specifically some of our larger areas, urban areas like Jersey City. But these smaller projects, these 12 unit projects are so critical because they represent neighborhood redevelopment. You know, large projects almost stand on their own, but these are part of the fabric of a neighborhood and really mean a lot to a neighborhood. It's across the street from a school, and it's part of the, the community. They, they weave themselves right into the fabric of this community. And we're always happy to see that type of project being done because this is an eyesore. In fact, I told someone as I got here, I used my GPS to confirm my direction, and my Google GPS showed a photo of the building, but it had boarded up blue pieces of wood on it. It was a few years old, obviously. I think they need to update that photograph because this place looks pretty good to me. And I'm looking forward to go through the property and working with Garden State Episcopal and other partners in the future. We are really a friends. Um to this project. I'm going to say we're a friend because we do not have funding directly in the County of Hudson. What we do though is we shepherd the continuum of care process, the process Amory spoke of in partnership with the City of Jersey City. As many of you here know and understand what a continuum is, it's a collaborative and what we do is we plan our housing initiatives, programs, projects such as these throughout the year for um, hopefully very large allocations from HUD. But again, a partnership. And uh, we've all become partners because we want to, because of the work that great partners like Garden State does, but because we have to. Because without the HMFA, without HUD, without local funding and support, these projects do not get built. Um, Amory and I are colleagues for a very long time. One of the first projects we worked on was on this block, it was Bergen Avenue, it was Grant Avenue, about many, many years ago. I won't say how many years ago. Both representing the city and the county. 
So this was always a block that we have spent time with, we believed in, didn't always work as we wanted it to work. It's almost being rebirthed because when we were doing it 25 years ago, we were gentrifying this area. And here we are again. Um, all the best, Carol. You, your staff, John, tremendous. We are building in Bayonne, just to share that your neighbor in Bayonne will get some affordable housing in the future with Garden State. Um, what's most important, though, are the people who are going to live here and who are going to call this their home, especially those people with special needs, with challenges. We don't build it enough. We wish we could. There will always be more demand than we can fill. There just always will be. So projects like this we should respect. We should thank, especially the nonprofits who work so hard to put them up. And be most thankful that 12 families' lives are going to be made better today because of all the work you've done. So I thank you. I wish you the best. All the best. Uh, I hope we get to see you at more of these as our partner and our friend. Thank you. Thank you. It is wonderful to be here on this absolutely spectacular, beautiful day. Um, first of all, on behalf of New Jersey Community Capital, you know, I'd like to thank and congratulate all the partners that have been involved in this, in this amazing project. First of all, obviously, Garden State Episcopal, Carol, John, Chantel, Ricardo, uh, taking this vacant building that's been vacant for, what, over 10 years, I think, and transforming it into an actual masterpiece of eight affordable housing units and four special needs housing units. And it's quite an accomplishment. But what I really think about Garden State Episcopal, I think about what the impact they have on the community that goes beyond, beyond just providing housing. I mean, they're true thought leaders for all of us that are in this work around how do we rebuild communities and how do we take vacant properties and repurpose them for equitable and community use. I think this is a true testament to the power of public, government, non-profit sector partnerships to really rebuild housing. So w without all the pieces of the puzzle coming together, I think it's difficult to complete projects like this. So for New Jersey Community Capital, I think that this is a really important project for us to be involved in because I think it deeply aligns with our mission and our work. You know, in Jersey City, we're involved in a number of community stabilization initiatives around housing, around education, around early child care, around Sandy Relief for small businesses, around community facilities. But at the heart, what we truly believe, what we truly believe, that housing is the powerful lever for neighborhood change. And I think that's what we, we see here today. Um, I just would like to say that behind us, I think today, right here, is an, an, a tr true example of that for a number of reasons. It's going to be easy to imagine 12 families, you know, the, the celebrations they're going to have here, the memories they're going to develop here, you know, the, all, the, all, the, all the lives they're going to build. It's, it's easy to imagine how this has come to life and, and to work today. But I also think that the benefits of affordable housing are something that we can never, ever underestimate. Way too many people, even in this great city of Jersey City, spend way too much of their income on housing. But what Garden State Episcopal has done today is to ensure that the people pay a fair amount for their housing, which lets them pay more. And, 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 and the statistics show this on education, on health, on food. They will have that opportunity on wealth building. And so that allows these families an opportunity to create for themselves and their families. And I think that that's a really important aspect of this work that we can never, ever, ever un underestimate. Finally, just let me briefly say, housing is here is one part of the story. But I think there's other parts of the story. We've, all, we've heard a number of the speakers today talk about it. This was a vacant building, 10 years vacant, blighted, draining the life out of neighborhoods next to schools. Right? You think about the kids walking by these, these, these projects every day. What were they thinking of it? But now today, we have a completely beautiful building that's a community asset. That's a community asset that increases and preserves values for the rest of the people in the neighborhood. And it's going to put eyes on the street and vitality and life to this neighborhood. So it is really a win-win-win on every situation. Uh, finally, I would be remiss if I didn't thank Leah Apgar for New Jersey Community Capital who's our team leader in housing and healthy communities. 
uh, who's done a sensational job on this program. I always say, for some reason, I get up here to speak, but she does all the hard work. So Leah, <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, finally, congratulations, everyone. Carol, you, amazing. You. Really appreciate it. It's a pleasure to be here today. Thank you. Thank you. Every market that we go to in every city, we're fortunate to have a local guest speaker. And today we have Mayor Fulop who will be here today to speak with you and share some words. I want to introduce Mayor Fulop to you. I don't know how much introduction I really need to give him since he was just elected uh, back in May and obviously took over office in July. So I'm pretty sure that the media has done a very good job of, of giving you his background throughout the last number of months throughout the election. But uh, just to give you a little bit of a background, Mayor Fulop knows a lot about small businesses, grew up in a family uh, where his father their own and ran their family uh, delicatessen in Newark. So he definitely knows the trials and tribulations that small businesses go through every single day. So it gives me great pleasure to welcome Mayor Fulop. Um, let, me, let me start by just saying briefly uh, thank you to Lane, thank you to Peter Milley of the uh, PGA who's not here today, he's at the Barclays today. Um, yesterday we had the opportunity to spend the day in the Pro-Am at the Barclays and just so you all know, um, it is a uh, terrific organization, the PGA, and we're, it's a privilege to have them and their partners here during this week playing the Barclays. They've been involved with some terrific things outside of the tournament, um, particularly what we're doing today, talking about small businesses and outreach on this front. Um, and yesterday and um, Monday and Tuesday, they focused primarily on veteran issues and uh, resources to veteran families of deployed troops. And as somebody who served overseas in Iraq, I understand firsthand the trials and tribulations of military families. And so when they devote the week not only to a golf tournament, um, it says a lot about the quality of the organization you're dealing with here at web.com and the PGA and the Barclays and all the partners that are here um, during this time focusing on the things that are important beyond just the sport of golf. So just wanted to say thank you for all that you guys do. Um, as mayor of Jersey City, I, I really welcome the opportunity to address and encourage small businesses, which uh, represent about half of the private sector economy and more than 99% of all businesses in our regional and national economy. You know, frequently, elected officials and economists focus significantly upon the drivers that we would call large drivers in the economy. And yes, short-term interest rates effectively at 0%, and 10-year bond rates where they are and mortgage rates have encouraged both commercial construction and housing, meaning more job opportunities throughout the nation and particularly here in Jersey City where we are seeing a boom. It is nonetheless from our standpoint, it's small businesses, which is the core of the economy's most recent expansion. Collectively, I think you all can appreciate, small businesses witness the increase of income and profits as well as output while concurrently business bankruptcies and unemployment began to decline. It's really small businesses that have been the driver of any sort of turnaround. And yet while the small business economy is growing in this country, the effects of the most recent recession are still lingering. I think we all can appreciate that as well. And just to cite a couple recent notes from the Small Business Administration that's recently been documented. First, the number of business births and their associated employment remain below downturn levels. The number of self-employed individuals remain below pre-downturn levels. Women and Hispanic individuals both had self-employment declines over the last two years, while Asians and African Americans had slight gains. The number of self-employed veterans has been increasing as the declining number of Vietnam era veterans of the workforce has been countered by an increase in Iraq war era veterans over the last few years. You know, the future of a small business sector depends on several factors, including the improving of the financial conditions of consumers after more than five years of sluggish expansion. And I think we all can agree that the challenges to the national economy still remain very, very real to all of us. And despite macro challenges, small businesses are arguably doing better than most enterprises and are arguably uniquely positioned to seize the advantages in a turning and strengthening economy. The clearest 
statistic is while that the number of employer firms has fluctuated from just about under 5 million over the past quarter century, the larger number of non-employers, small businesses whose principal labor are the owners has almost doubled in size during that same period. It's now approaching 25 million. This points to several key things. And whether it's because of their size, agility, or entrepreneurial ability in accessing capital, small business is really optimistic today. Small business has historically had an uncanny and readily ability to adapt to change, most recently exemplified about what you will be talking today in online marketing, mindful of reduced costs, online marketing, which is the primary focus of this morning's presentation, is particularly well suited for small and medium sized businesses like many of you here, as it can easily serve to specialize niches in a low overhead cost, lower than traditional marketing. In particular, during our campaign over the last six months, online marketing was the biggest increase in cost that we spent our money on out of the $2 million that we spent between radio, TV, and online marketing. The biggest increase as driver was online, and we actually, when targeting that, we saw significant gains there. And while the overall picture has improved from this time last year, we in government and public policy positions need to be mindful of the challenges which would threaten the strengthening of the recovery of the small businesses. In Jersey City, in particular, retail and distribution construction, industrial um, development, still the barometer of our regional growth where we've seen significant opportunity. It is, however, really you all in the small business leaders who provide the spirit of entrepreneurship, investment in the local economy, and the tangible creation of wealth within our community that we realize on a day-to-day -day basis. Here, as a new administration, we want to be small business allies, and I think that's why we're all here today. We want to understand small businesses build Jersey City, the nation, and the state, and, with st and, and when you succeed, whether it's expanding markets, increasing access to capital, or executing your business plan, we all succeed and see actually a better Jersey City. So your success here and your involvement here is really our success as a city. And we all stand here as an administration ready to support you and provide incentive programs so that you can grow your respective business here in Jersey City and prosper. I just want to say thank you for giving us the opportunity to be a part of this today. And of course, congratulations to web.com and all of you here. Thank you. So things are well underway at the Small Business Forum. Tell us, how does it look? Uh, this is one of our better small business forums, obviously, with the, the area and the city and the community itself. Uh, we we're able to draw from a lot of places, and uh, this has been a great experience so far for us, a great forum, and you know the attendees are really having an opportunity to uh, learn a lot of valuable stuff this morning. We have dozens, I see, that uh, showed up. Some people beginning business, some people hoping to begin business. This is for really anybody who either one, has a business, two, who's thinking about a business, or three, who just wants to learn about online marketing. You know, the internet is such a powerful tool. It's probably our most powerful tool uh, that we know of. And leveraging the internet is something that has to be done. And there is a certain way of doing it. And not a lot of people realize the intricacies that go into it. But yet today, they're going to find out really how tough it is. And we're here to help them learn those challenges. There's, we asked a question today. Not one person raised their hand the last time they used the telephone book. But we asked them if they used Google. Google, Bing, or Yahoo, and every single person raised their hand. So uh, the internet is, again, the most powerful tool that we know, and uh, it's the way that we go about finding our information these days. Oh, so good morning. Tell us why you're down at the Hyatt today. Good morning. I'm Debbie Khan. This is my daughter, Molly Khan, and we're here today because we are learning more about um, building a small business and um, how the internet affects it and how it, we can um, learn to choose a really good uh, website and um, people to help us with uh, building our business. We're building downtown yogurt in Jersey City um, on the corner of Newark and Grove, and we're very excited to be here. Now you anticipate opening that very soon, correct? Yes, um, we're in construction now, and um, we anticipate opening up in about six or eight weeks. Yeah, my name is Rand Taylor. I live out in near Clinton, New Jersey, and I have a fuel additive business called the Fuel Ox. All right, tell us a little bit about um, your business and what you're hoping to get out of the forum today, sir. Well, we're, we're, we're a fledgling business. We just started. We have tremendous technology, and um, we're really just now breaking into you know, our target market, and our website is brand new and we're looking for anything we can to get ourselves an edge in this, e in this economy. And what kind of services do you provide at uh, your business? Well, actually, it's not a service, it's a product. What we have is we have a fuel additive that is, is really used in the commercial aspect, which increases gas mileage by 8 to 12 percent in big trucks, large machinery, things like along that line, as well as cut down on the uh, emissions 
and a number of other really great things. The interesting thing about web.com is they're kind of a, a place that, had, that does it all for you. You know, and they necessarily are the biggest in the industry and have it streamlined and it's pretty cost effective as well. We don't use them right now, but uh, when we come out of here, we'll, we'll, we will probably rethink that and, and take a long, hard look at uh, possibly doing that.